Don't get me wrong. Amazon, hard at work. <laughs> In the midst of a standoff, he's gonna deliver his package. I don't give a fuck. <laughs> Go Amazon. <laughs> Amazon don't play. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. Give us the package, bro. What are you doing? <laughs> Amazon is this shit. Look, he's taking a picture. It made it there. <laughs> We're not politicians. Well, at least they do their job better than some politicians. I, Kamal Harris, am your Democrat candidate for president because Joe Biden finally exposed his senility of the debate. Thanks, Joe. I was selected because I am the ultimate diversity hire. I'm both a woman and a person of color. So if you criticize anything I say, you're both sexist and racist. I may not know the first thing. I mean, I know it's a parody, so it's just a joke. But still, they're using factual information they used previously to defend themselves. There are a lot of defects out there. There's not a lot of disclosure. There's not a lot of labeling. So among the many AI bills that are on the desk uh, are three specific election-related bills. And then you want to sign some laws? I just thought, you know, why, why waste your time with a politician unless they're going to do something for you? There's two. Two are signed. And, uh, and three are signed. And this oh, is uh, now official, that is now uh, injunctive relief if you do any of those deep fake election misrepresentations. So that's how easy it is to govern uh, in California. <laughs> So all the defects that he wants to cancel, just like the one that was for Kamala Harris, then even CNN says Kamala Harris has lied way more that officially by banning that, you need to ban her too. But we know you're going to enforce the rule only on one side. That's a thing. We can also tell all the accomplishments that Gavin Newsom did in the last few years, put them all together. And for some odd reason, it sounds like a parody. And if you ask me, why do I keep saying parody and not parody? Well... A lot of left-leaning people have shamed me for the way that I speak, and I like to say it on purpose to see who is who. Hi, I'm Gavin Newsom, the governor of California. This is a message for the people of America, given in my authentically recorded non-AI voice. And clearly this video is parody. Elon even retweeted it, but hey, I guess you can see it in California. Thanks to my leadership over the last several years, California has become a world leader in extremist left-wing governance. My policies were so effective that almost one million people are now fleeing the state every year. We even ran out of U-Hauls. During the COVID pandemic, I locked everyone in their homes and shut down businesses for months. Not the French Laundry though, that's my favorite restaurant. I mean, I think that all is true. They caught him in a restaurant eating without a mask while he was locking everybody else and people are leaving your state because you're taxing everybody so much. It is the truth. That's why you tax people that even leave your states, because it's all about taxing people. Last year, I cleaned up the dangerous, messy streets of San Francisco, you know, because Chinese Communist President Xi was coming, and I really wanted to impress him. He's my boss, after all. This year, I signed legislation that allows me to take custody of your kid if you refuse to give him artificial hormones and chop off his genitals. Because if you don't do that, you're a bigot, and bigots shouldn't be allowed to have kids I've also led the way in green energy by banning all cars that don't run on electricity. Then I banned almost all the electricity. This is smart leadership. That is all true. The homelessness was removed and the whole thing was blocked so she can come in and nobody can come back for a while. The whole thing about the gender thing, that is also the truth. And the fact that you couldn't even charge your car and they told you chill with the charging, there's no electricity, oh my God. You forced us to use the course. On my watch, the cost of living and homelessness have skyrocketed. Schools are failing. Drug dealers and human traffickers are pouring across the border. And poop has covered the sidewalks of San Francisco. This is the positive, joyful vision we offer as Democrats. That's why I'm enthusiastically endorsing Kamala Harris for president in 2024. She'll do to the country everything I did in California. Anyway, I'm California Governor Gavin Newsom, and I approve this 100% real message, which is a recording of my voice without the assistance of any AI whatsoever. This isn't a deep fake, and you can rest assured 
that it isn't because I just signed an unconstitutional law outlawing deep fakes. No one would dare violate it. And by going after the people, you unleash the Kraken. Release the Kraken. Called Speaker Pelosi today and incredible and uh, imperative to have federal government support, particularly in one area, and that's unemployment insurance. There's no greater impact quickly in terms of unemployment insurance, but we'll meet it for all our diverse community. Radical leftist insanity has not stopped in California with the legislature just voting to give illegal aliens unemployment benefits. Yes, Americans are suffering. There are many American citizens who are unemployed, but despite that, they want to establish a so-called excluded workers program to give $300 a week in unemployment benefits to people who are not in the country legally. Now, mind you, this is a violation of federal law. States are not allowed to provide benefits to people who come here illegally, and then they can get this for about 20 weeks. It's crazy. It's insanity. Now, just imagine if millions of people enroll in this program. It would be a total disaster. The Employment Development Department is already uh, $31, $32 billion in the hole because of what happened during COVID when people claimed those unemployment benefits. Now imagine adding illegals into the mix. The bill was just presented before the governor uh, at, about a week ago, I would say. And any time now, he could sign it. It's crazy. Now, in his defense, people can say, well, he didn't sign it yet, so he still has to sign. He needs to think about it. I'm like, did you know what he already signed, by the way? Million dollars, no vision, no plan, no accountability. Fast forward. I know it's not fast enough, but fast forward, $15.3 billion, accountability at the core and strategies for collaboration and cooperation across a spectrum of supports, the likes of which we have not seen in California's history. I get it. You want to see progress and you want to see it now. You want to see progress in terms of encampments. You want to see progress in terms of people off the streets. And as the mayor said, you want to see our values represented in that progress. No one's naive. It's not just about sweeping things under the rug or kicking people off the streets and sidewalks and claiming a job well done. That doesn't do justice to the injustice I mean, you did kind of do it for Xi Jinping and China. That is perpetuated because our inability to reconcile the larger issues of wealth and income inequality and all its forms and manifestations, the most acute, of course, the issue of homelessness. Gavin Newsom in 2023. Here is my new 15 billion plan to solve the homelessness and accountability at the core. The audit hey there is 24 billion missing what the heck gavin Newsom says in 2024 and vetoing this bill that audits my spending on homelessness i'm like brah you are creating a bill to check you how you need to fix something when you already promised that you're going to fix it it's all this infrastructure that does nothing and all the money gets lost brah this guy is a great example on how to destroy a country. That's like my pastor keeps stealing all the money that I gave at the church. And then he says, well, I I'm going to put my son to count the money so I don't waste the money. I'm like, no. <laughs> having Trump not only have had the codes, but now having the classified information for Americans and being able to put that out and share it in his resort with anyone and everyone who comes through should be terrifying to all Americans mm -hmm. and he needs to be shot, stopped. And you tell me this is not inciting to violence, but I should also not be surprised there's so many shooters within half a year. Yes, sir, careful as you can, you're gonna be walking over here to this, the gate over here, all right? Slow and steady, what you here for today? All right, come on in here, have a seat in the cell. We're going to gather up some paperwork and get things started for you. Do you have any questions? Yes, right. What we're going to start doing Monday is, since parents, you don't want to raise your kids, I'm going to start raising them. Every time we make an arrest, your kid's photo is going to be put out there. And if I could do it, I'm going to perp walk your kid so that everybody can see what your kid's up to. 
News flash, Florida boy arrested, perp walk and thrown into jail after bragging about the Pum Pum list and showing off an arsenal of weapons. For the little bastard who are out there who think this is funny, ha ha ha, you want to get on social media, you ain't that smart, you're getting caught. Anything it's an okay thing, a little shame here and there to make sure people don't make Pum Pum list because Pum Pum making list people end up in jail. I think they are trying to get even interpreters to teach the kids, mm. let alone get to this part. Yeah, yeah they're having know. a huge problem, I think. It's kind of ridiculous. With trying to teach. There were 45 Haitians that started kindergarten this year. Whoa. 45. How big is kindergarten mm -hmm. overall? A kindergarten class is probably no more than 60 at most. At most. Yeah, and like <laughs> one classroom is probably like a, a 30 each, yeah. 20 kids, I'm 20, thinking. 20, Maybe 30, 25. Yeah. Wow. I don't know. So yeah. like the majority of the kindergarten yeah. is Haitian yeah, now. Yeah. In what, two years? something like that like yeah yeah, when it yeah. and yeah. they don't speak english i no. well actually i think the younger kids they speak might, yeah, more they, english they than the chance. older kids okay we're talking to a guy yeah. uh tomorrow who he had to pull his seventh grader out of school because they like they just didn't have yeah, the resources I've, he was like i've heard stories like that yeah, yeah. one of the things like i said about the the not speaking english like mid grades mid school middle school grades where parents are having a problem because their kids can't advance because the teachers are having to compensate for the kids who can't speak. Right. I'm not saying we shouldn't help other people. Yeah, but... If you bring so many kids at the same time that are illegal and you don't even have enough translator and you tell the citizens that's already paying for these people with their tax paying money to get their own translator? Whew. Sounds like my life is a parody too. Now on just one station, horses missing after a barn break-in. That search ending hours later and not far from their home. Two animals found butchered about a mile away. And tonight their owners, as you can imagine, are looking for answers. The night team's Alex Browning has this exclusive. For somebody to have the stomach to do something like this, this is heartless. A heartless horse heist in southwest Miami-Dade over the weekend. This is the same thing as going into somebody's yard, taking their dog, and cooking it. Turning deadly, two horses swiped from southwest Miami-Dade turned up dead. Their corpses found Sunday morning off southwest 205th Avenue. I noticed that the fence was cut. And at that point, we realized that they were taken. Owner David says it started sometime overnight Saturday. His two horses, Sammy and War on the home front, stolen from their stalls off Southwest 207th Avenue. There are children, and they were abducted and killed for meat. Their corpses later found a few blocks away. Both horses were slaughtered um, sometime over the weekend. We need to come together, help out the detectives in this investigation. Let's give some closure to the family and, of course, put behind bars these individuals that would do such a heinous crime. A mystery leaving a family heartbroken and now searching for answers. You know, our children are heartbroken. Um, my wife's heart heartbroken and, um, you know, we're just just trying to get through this. Don't worry, ladies and gentlemen, this has happened in Miami. So we can blame Ohio and there's Haitians. Don't worry about it. But I'm actually very surprised a person that has horses, you could have eaten dogs, cat, chicken, things were kind of more normal. But no, you went after horses. That's not a very Western thing to do. All I can say to you is that you are a disgrace. I'm an 80 year old woman and I've never seen anything like this. I grew up in the Jim Crow South. And the policies that you're passing in this city remind me of the Jim Crow South. I had to drink out of a colored water fountain, or the whites would drink out of a white water fountain. But you know what I didn't have to worry about? <coughs> Going back to my community and it would be destroyed. And everybody else is in my community but black people. And this is what you've done with this immigration. You have allowed all these people, you brought all these people into this city. You are destroying this city. And the black community is flooded with all of these immigrants, violent ones, prostitution, gang. You did that. You are doing this to your people. You are an absolute disgrace to me. 
Like I said, I drank out of that colored water fountain, but I could go back to that black community that was intact. Women are crying. Taxes are going up. What am I going to do with my children? Where are we going to go and live? This is because of you, Brandon Jackson. You're destroying the black, uh, the south side of, of Chicago with your policy, all under the Dem Democratic Party. You are a disgrace. Ladies and gentlemen, imagine you are born in a very disadvantaged situation during Jim Crow back in the day, and now that you're going to die very soon, you're reminded about that again. It's like, I prefer the bad people back in the day because at least they were honest with their opinion. But now you have people with a dishonest opinion telling they're helping others under the guise of empathy and you should understand. What do you prefer? The bully in your face or the bully in your back? Don't get me wrong, my boss a guitar bong. Put the fire na mi blonde, kush hash purple skunk, kriyo yo golombichi jam jam, dur loketa berdeta welcome.